All right, so today we are gonna be taking a look at Windows XP Service Pack 4. Now you're probably thinking to yourself right now, wait, did he just say Service Pack 4? I thought Microsoft only released three Service Packs. Well, you'd be right. Microsoft only officially released three Service Packs for Windows XP. Um, only recently did a developer group come out with a Service Pack 4. So this is an unofficial Service Pack 4. Now, you're probably asking right now, why would I be interested in that? Well, the reason you'd be interested in it is, let's say you've reformatted your computer and are looking to update your system. You've installed Service Pack 3, but now have hundreds and hundreds of updates that Microsoft has just thrown at you. And you have to sit there now for the better half of an hour waiting for all those to download and install. Well, this makes it easier because now you can just run one application and it is installed. Little history lesson here, kind of switching gears. They did this, uh, I don't know if it's this specific group, but somebody did this for Windows 2000. They made an unofficial Service Pack 5, which is really nice. I've used it in the past for my virtual machine, um, installing Service Pack 5 on there. Didn't really feel like making a video because I don't feel anyone uses Windows 2000 anymore. But XP, however, there's still a small, there's still about 20% of the market that uses it, last I checked. So we're going to go ahead and without further ado here, we're going to start running it. So let's double click on it. So far everything looks pretty much similar to a regular service pack. It's extracting the files to a directory. And everything looks the same right here. Um, before I start though, let me go ahead and show you that this in fact is a out of date computer by going to system information. As you can see we have Internet Explorer 6 still on here, one of the most insecure browsers ever made. And right there we have Service Pack 1 currently on this computer. And that is it. So we're going to see if we can go right to Service Pack 4. It's quite a leap, but in theory you should be able to go to the, go right to Service Pack 4. It's the whole point of a Service Pack, right? Let's click Next here. Um, they got a license agreement here. You can read through it if you wish. Otherwise, in order to continue the installation, you have to agree to it as usual. Click Next. And then click Next again. Now comes the fun part of waiting. And this first time I did this, it did not take that long, but for the sake of time and not boring you guys to death, if you already haven't been bored to death, um, I'm gonna pause the video and we'll continue after the installation is complete. So I'll be right back. All right, so the installation has completed and it's stating it needs to reboot the computer. There's a surprise. Any of you who installed the service pack would know you have to reboot your computer after that. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and click finish and reboot the computer. And once the computer is rebooted, we should have Service Pack 4 on the system. Now, the first time I did it, it take, did take a little while, there we go, to um, reboot the computer. But nevertheless, it didn't take very long once it got through the process. So I'm just going to not pause the video here. We're going to sit it out. And I'm going to point out a couple of things that I noticed. If you notice, the first thing is right here, um, we have a... a welcome screen or a wizard in a sense we have to go through for the security center which which should pop up after we're done installing this or after we should say we reboot because the security center in Windows XP was introduced back in Service Pack 2. So we're loading back up the desktop here and sure enough we have Windows Security Center. Uh, like I said this was introduced back in Service Pack 2 which is a good sign that we have a Service Pack installed now at least. So we'll go ahead and close out of this stuff. And this also is supposed to install Internet Explorer 8, which it does. Internet Explorer 8 and Windows Media Player 11, which are both the latest versions of Internet Explorer and Windows Media Player available to Windows XP users. Let's open up Internet Explorer 8. We'll make sure, yep, everything is fully functional. Looks good to me. Granted, Internet Explorer 8 is so outdated as of right now, you probably want to use Chrome or something else that is uh, supported on XP besides Internet Explorer 8. But nevertheless, it's still good to update to it because you need to use it for Windows updates. Um, now, I'm not going to go through the checking process. I tried it earlier, and it just ended up becoming a hassle. It wanted me to validate Windows. I don't know how dare Microsoft try to validate their own products, right? Um, but I don't have it activated currently because this is one of the old installation disks from one of my computers I had lying around this house. And, um, well, I don't feel like digging out the key because I have no idea where it is. So... Uh, 
not going to be able to activate it, but for the most part, what I've seen, this looks like it worked. Looks like everything is up to date. Um, at least it's a lot more up to date than it was. It saved me from installing Internet Explorer 8 or Windows Media Player 11 at the very least. So that's going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's still checking for updates, and I got like halfway through here until it told me to validate. So I do know it's working. Um, but like I said, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope this helps you guys. Uh, if anyone who is using Windows XP still and is looking for a faster way to uh, update their system. So that'll be it. Talk to you guys later.